All right, today is a really good day to buy some crypto. I have to go to the gym. Also, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go crazy. Don't you think so? It's three o'clock, haven't eaten all day. A little shaky. Got a new pre-workout. When it comes to pre-workouts, the worse stuff in them, the better. Wait, what? You, hiding from the kid. To assess your tolerance, take half scoop with seven ounces of water. Exactly seven ounces. Is you ready? It's a good girl. Things should not taste that good. Let's do a little bit. Oregon, just gorgeous. video we're going to talk about buying EOS and storing EOS. This operation is really no different than any other crypto operation. Buy either Bitcoin or Ethereum. We're going to move that Bitcoin or Ethereum to an exchange and we're going to exchange that for EOS and then we're going to take that EOS and we're going to store that. You ready to get started? Aviators maybe not. I don't know. What do you guys think? Dumb? It might be. All right first off I want to say this is really the time that separates people that are legitimately believing in investing in certain cryptocurrencies and they have a long-term horizon, right? That's what we are doing. We are picking up assets um, and we are holding them for that time frame that is measured in years, not months, not days, right? I'm getting a lot of messages from people saying, oh my God, crypto is over. It's, you know, a bubble. It wasn't what we thought it would be. If you are dealing in cryptocurrency and you're holding crypto for the long term, Yes, there may have been a bubble that has kind of come up and since popped and may continue to pop, but you have to realize something about cryptocurrency right now. You are so early. It is unreal how early we are in the cryptocurrency revolution. But we're gonna go through these huge periods of bubbles and bursting bubbles. We'll probably have another bubble. We'll probably burst again. There's going to be multiple cycles that you're going to be involved in if you're in the crypto space. You just have to know that if you're in it for the long term, that is going to be what it's going to be like. When everybody is saying that it's over, you as an investor, somebody who is picking up assets, that should trigger something in your brain. You should go, oh, when everything is down, that is the perfect time to be buying the things that I believe have a long term future. It's that skill. The skill of buying when everybody believes the world is ending that separates really good investors from amateur investors. Now, am I saying that every single cryptocurrency is going to come back? Absolutely not. I actually believe there's a lot of cryptocurrencies that have the possibility of going to zero. You know on this channel that I don't really recommend specific ones. You know, I tell you my thought processes behind some of the investments that I make and I show you step by step how to make those investments, but I'm not doling out financial advice in any way. You really have to be responsible and do your own research and come to your own conclusion. I'm just a guy on the internet talking about crypto, right? It's probably the worst disclaimer ever. So here I am, I'm on the Coinbase site. I am under buy and sell, and I am going to buy 100 USD Ethereum. Confirm that. So just a side note, Coinbase is ridiculously high fees. You can see here, um, $96 worth of my $100 actually bought Ethereum. They charge me almost $4 in fees. There are other ways to buy um, cryptocurrencies other than Coinbase. I'm just using Coinbase right now because it's a really easy way to show you how to do this. There's a lot better ways to, to do this that have lower fees than using Coinbase. Okay, so I'm gonna come out here to my accounts view and you can see here that my ETH wallet has 95.67 worth of ETH, 1.1 490 Ethereum. Now I want to take this Ethereum and I want to send this to my exchange because there is no way to buy EOS inside of Coinbase. So I have to move my Ethereum off of Coinbase onto my exchange, which is Binance, and that's where I'm going to buy EOS. All right, so here's a really annoying thing is that when you click send max, 
because you don't have um, anything left in your account after you've specified that maximum amount, um, Coinbase doesn't automatically back off the amount that you want to send to um, cover the fee. And so they'll give you a message that says you don't have enough money in your account to make this transaction because you want to send all of it and you're not leaving a cent or two behind to make the transaction. So an easy way around this is just to go, all right, if the max is $95.89, just back off a couple of cents and leave a couple of cents in your account in order for you to make that transaction. So what I'm gonna do is, this is 95.89, I'm gonna back off to 95.85, and we're going to click continue. That's gonna give us the minor fee here, which is about a cent, and uh, leave a little bit left in that account. And uh, here's the address I wanna send it to, yep, that looks good. Here's the amount, that looks correct. Zero Coinbase fee, that's fine and my minor fee is gonna be that, and so there's my total, and uh, it's asking for a verification here. I'm gonna to go to my phone, and I'm gonna look at the messages that I've got from Coinbase, and I'm gonna type that in. That looks good, I'm gonna confirm that. Okay, so we have successfully sent our Ethereum from Coinbase to Binance. Okay, I can't remember if, I think Binance sent me an email, or um, Coinbase sent me an email saying that my transaction went through, so I'm good to go there. My Ethereum has been moved over to Binance and I can confirm that by coming to funds and clicking on balances and I can see here that I have my Ethereum in my account. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the built-in exchange in Binance. Binance is an exchange, so. And I want the advanced exchange. I always do everything in the advanced exchange of uh, Binance because I don't think that the um, the basic one is really that much different, even for new users. Um, I think it's better to use the advanced exchange. So what I'm gonna do is come here to the advanced exchange and right now I've got Bitcoin versus Tether um, highlighted. That's the chart that I'm looking at right now. What I want is I want EOS versus Ethereum, right? I'm gonna use my Ethereum to buy some EOS. And so now I'm looking at the chart of EOS versus Ethereum. And um, I'm gonna come down here and I'm looking at these orders, right? I'm going to want to buy EOS with my Ethereum and I can use one of these three order types. And I'm going to steer you guys towards using limit orders. Um, you can use a market order. I don't really believe there's any reason for you to be using stop limit orders right now. Um, and it's really kind of interesting because on cryptocurrency exchanges, we're really kind of limited in the amount of order types that we can make. Um, these really aren't that many types of orders. There's a lot of different types of orders that are available um, to, like, to investors if you're using, say, TD Ameritrade, right? You, you can make all sorts of crazy order types. These are really some pretty basic order types right here. But really quickly, I want to talk about the difference between a limit and a market order because you really wanna be using one of those two order types um, to pull off a transaction like this. So if you're gonna buy EOS with your Ethereum and you're gonna use a limit order, what you are saying when you do that is you're saying, here's the price that I want to pay for my EOS. I wanna use this many Ethereum to buy my EOS. When the price hits this price, then I want the order to fill. So what that means is that you're not going to pay any higher price than the price that you specify on this order. The order will not fill unless the price falls at or below what you've specified here. Using limit orders is a really good way to make sure that you're not overpaying um, for your assets. And I just think it's a really good habit to get um, into. Now, a market order is different from a limit order. A market order is just saying, I don't care what the price is, of EOS, I want you to take my Ethereum and I want you to convert it to EOS at the market price. So a lot of times when you put in a market order, you will get the market price or you may get slightly higher than the market price. You're basically just saying that you're going, you're comfortable taking whatever price the market is trading at right now. You want that order filled. So using a limit order, using a market order, it really doesn't matter too much which one you use if you're a person that has that horizon that's measured in years, right? Because we're talking about differences 
of a few ticks here or there, a few percentage points maybe. And really, unless you're day trading, that's not gonna make a huge difference to you. Um, so I just do think it's really good for you to kind of understand the differences between those two. And um, if you can, get in the habit of using limit orders um, for both buying and selling. Now, a stop limit is uh, a little bit more of a complex order. A stop limit is quite simply a limit order that is activated at a certain price. So you're gonna set your um, stop at a certain price and once the price hits that stop, then the limit portion of that order is gonna come into effect and it functions like a regular limit order. That's useful in other scenarios, but it's a little bit above um, what I wanna discuss in this video. Okay, so the current price is $1.84 or it's 021750 Ethereum for each um, EOS. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in a limit order. I'm gonna go 21650. Now this is really close, close to the price. So, I mean, this is almost like having a market order, right? Because I'm really expecting this to fill. Um, but I'm using a limit order, so I know I'm not gonna be paying any more than 0 0.021650 for my um, EOS. And the amount that I want to buy is going to be the max amount, which is 5304, right? It's telling me that right here. So I'm gonna type in 53.04. So you can either type it in um, manually or you can just click 100%. And I clicked 100%, so that's all of the Ethereum I have in the account. I want to be in this order. And uh, I'm gonna click Buy EOS. So the order itself was created, um, but it hasn't filled yet. So this area right here is gonna tell me all of my open orders that I have going on, right? And you can see I have an open order to buy um, EOS with my Ethereum and it's a limit order and it is 0% filled right now. So that means the price is above the price that I want to buy it at. Now I'm just going to camp out here and I'm going to watch the price for a little bit and see if that order fills. All right, I just wanted to show you. So something that's actually kind of cool about the advanced exchange in Binance is that once you put your order in down here, right, it just shows up down here as in the system and then you can see that there's a little arrow right here. This shows the price of your order, right? So you can see that trading is going on up here above my order and as my um, order gets closer to the price it's going to move up to that line or if the price goes up and it moves further away then my order will float down. As you can see it's kind of floating down right now because the price is going up just a little bit. I actually really like this feature of Binance and um, I'm a pretty big advocate of Binance. I think they have a really good built-in exchange compared to most cryptocurrency exchanges out there. All right, we've been sitting here for a little bit and it actually took a lot longer than I thought it was gonna take. And um, come down here to the one hour mark and you can see my order is no longer here because the price dipped down and uh, I don't have any more open orders. So that means that my order filled. So I'm gonna come here to trade history and it looks like I bought and, and my entire order for 53.04 EOS was filled. So I am done with the exchange here. My order filled and uh, I don't have to do anything else here. So I'm gonna click on Binance and I'm gonna come back out to balances and I'm gonna look and make sure that that was the case. And I do in fact have um, EOS here. And this is interesting, I don't know why I have actually more than was shown in the order other than I might have got a better price than um, they reflected on the order screen. All right, so now we're gonna move the EOS that we just bought to our software wallet. And I gotta be honest, I originally made this video and I thought I was gonna show you guys how to move your uh, EOS to your Ledger Nano, but um, putting EOS on your Ledger Nano right now is so complicated that teaching it to people is really difficult to do and they, they've got to get it figured out um, better before I make a video on it because right now it honestly just sucks. So for the time being what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this EOS off the exchange and I'm going to move it to a software wallet which is not near as secure as a hardware wallet like a Ledger Nano but it is in my opinion more secure than having it left on the exchange. Now the reason that software wallets are less secure than hardware wallets are because 
if you had some sort of um, hacking software like a keylogger that was um, installed by hackers on your computer, they could see that you were opening your Exodus wallet and they could see the type, the password that you were typing in and then they could actually use that information to log into your Exodus account themselves and remove your cryptocurrency um, from that account. So that's the danger in having a software wallet and that's the reason that I really do advocate using hardware wallets, but storing stuff in a software wallet, just so you know, is not the most secure. All right, so if I wanted to move my EOS to my software wallet, what I would do is, first off, I'd come to the screen, make sure I've got that EOS in my Binance account, which I do. Then I'm gonna come down here and I'm going to fire up Exodus. Then I'm going to make sure that I'm on the wallet and that I have EOS selected. And you can see here, I have a little bit more than nine EOS sitting in this software wallet. And so what I wanna do is just click on receive and this is going to give me um, my EOS account. And so I am going to copy this account. It's copied to my clipboard. Now I'm gonna Alt Tab back over to Binance. I'm gonna come up here to Funds. I'm gonna pull down to Withdrawals. And then the token that I want to withdraw is going to be EOS. So now I'm going to paste the address that I got from my Exodus wallet into this field. Now I don't need any memo, so I'm gonna check no memo. It says here this is the total amount that is available. And so I'm gonna click on that because I want all of my EOS to be um, taken to the software wallet. And I'm gonna click submit. I'm gonna open up my Google Authenticator. I'm gonna type in what I see there for Binance. Now it's saying that it sent me an email and I'm gonna to have to go to the email to confirm. I'm gonna to go to my inbox and I am going to confirm the withdrawal. Okay, so now it's just a matter of checking the Exodus wallet and seeing when that money comes through. Now I've come back here to my history tab and I can see right now that this um, transaction is processing. All right, so the EOS just came through. It took less than a minute actually. And you can see here that um, my balance in the software wallet went up and um, there's the history shows um, when it was received right there. So I am good to go. All right, so today what we did was we took $100 um, from our debit card, we went onto Coinbase and we bought some Ethereum. We moved that Ethereum to Binance where we exchanged it for some EOS. Then we took that EOS from Binance and we moved it to the software wallet Exodus. And uh, I hope that was helpful.